Welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us. What would you say if I told you that a woman is being publicly lynched every day? Not metaphorically, but through relentless, vile attacks on her character and humanity. When it began, few noticed. But now, after close to eight years, it's become so routine, so vicious, that many have become numb to it. The attackers, empowered by a system that allows them to hide behind anonymous sources, craft damaging narratives with impunity. This is Meghan Markle's reality. For nearly a decade, the UK press has waged an unrelenting war on her, printing 30 plus articles sometimes, all negative articles in one single day. And now, for a while now, they've been enlisting US media to join the fray. The attacks, groundless, hateful, and dehumanizing. They target a feminist, a humanitarian, entrepreneur, a daughter, a wife, and a mother of two. Why? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Because they can. Because two men control the narrative. And they have chosen her as... Their scapegoat. The British monarchy doesn't understand or wants change, and for some reason, she embodies that. Where are the voices of solidarity? Where are the feminists? Where are the international women organizations that advocate on behalf of women? Where is the outrage? Are we selective on which women we will defend or which women we will stand up for? Is it that cliche mentality of, oh, well, she's a duchess? If a princess is being abused, is she less than a person of lesser means being abused? No, I ask you the question. Because I don't understand to this time and this date why so many have remained mute. As this woman, the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, is relentlessly lynched every single day with vile articles that are written about her, an entire network where each show has a segment on her pushing a vile, negative, disgusting narrative. What is it? Why is she not worthy of your defense? Is it because she is mixed race? Is it because she is black mixed race? What is it? She stands up and defends women. She stands up and believes in feminism. So why is it that so many women around the world and in that country have decided that she's enemy number one and seems that they will not stop. So imagine being stripped of your dignity, paraded across a country while others throw filth at you, both metaphorically and literally. Would that qualify as lynching? 
if this happened to you, would you survive? You see, I changed the words a little bit there, but a quite famous person in Britain wrote an article where he expressed his desire, his fantasy, to see Meghan Markle stripped, paraded across the country, and people to throw excrement at her. Did anything happen to him? Oh, no, my dearest. Not a thing. Not one thing. This is the violence. The violence that Meghan Markle has endured every single day. And the question remains, why should she have to? Why does the world stay silent? Are they waiting for a repeat of Diana's fate? Today we'll be looking at the article that was written in the Sunday Times and looking at their attempt to keep this narrative alive that Meghan Markle is a bully. A recent article about Meghan Markle in the Sunday Times, which is owned by Rupert Murdoch News Corp, is yet another example of how selective reporting and deliberate omission perpetuates a biased narrative. Tom Sykes portrays Meghan as a tyrannical boss, while conveniently disregarding significant facts. He ignores any context within which these bullying allegations were brought forth. He ignores that the palace had ordered an investigation, which the results of we do not know because the palace decided that it would not publish any of the results. He ignores that there was one person particularly behind these allegations of bullying. And for broader context, he also ignores the conditions under which Meghan Markle and Prince Harry left the United Kingdom, the real dangers and threats that existed and to this day still exist. He ignores the context in which publications, tabloid, television, broadcast media relentlessly have been publishing articles over articles, another article about Meghan Markle, all of them negative, with no real credible sources that will come and put their names in front of these allegations. All of them are anonymous sources. Royal protection. Um, how would you characterize the threats that Meghan and Harry received? Well, disgusting and very real. I've talked publicly for many years about the threat of extreme right-wing terrorism in this country. I've often been misquoted as, as taking my eye off the ball, as though I think that that was the biggest threat. I've never called it the biggest threat, but it was the fastest growing. You know, And my wonderful friend and counterpart at MI5 will tell you exactly the same thing, that when I started in CT in 2015... Counterterrorism. Counterterrorism. It was about 6% of our total workload. Certainly when I left 15, 16 months ago, it was over 20% of our workload. But there were many serious, credible threats against Meghan, were there, emanating from the far right? Absolutely. If you'd seen the stuff that was written 
and you were receiving it, the kind of rhetoric that's online, if you don't know what I know, you would feel under threat all of the time. So you were convinced that there was a genuine threat to Meghan's life on a, you know, on more than one occasion, on several occasions. Absolutely. We had teams investigating it. People have been prosecuted for He didn't write anything about that. Same, he completely ignores the UK tabloid media's relentless, relentless smear campaign designed to undermine the couple. Not a word is spent on the grossly offensive commentary by public figures like Jeremy Clarkson, who fantasy of publicly humiliating Megan with his vile imagery reflects the deep-rooted misogyny and racism in British media. Where is the balance, I ask? Where? Because I didn't see it. I didn't read it. Couldn't find it anywhere. And I read the damn article twice. Where is the outrage at the media's role in creating such a hostile environment for Megan, a woman who had the uh, uh, audacity to not only marry into the royal family, but to retain her independence and identity. Sykes uses anonymous sources conveniently, failing to mention the context of these claims. You know, the second I saw anonymous sources, I just went, okay, so this is going to be another fantasy creation. The outpouring of love that had emerged in us weekly was served up by Megan's comms team to push back against the Hollywood. Reporter article. After reading this rather odd piece, I decided to call up a number of individuals who worked for Megan back in Blighty when she was still a royal. It's fair to say that their recollections varied. There definitely were. Bad, very bad, even psycho moments. I witnessed people being chewed up in person and over the phone and made to feel like s asterisk asterisk asterisk. One courtier who worked for Meghan and Harry told me, adding, it was an incredibly fraught time and I'm inclined to give her the benefit of the doubt. She has said herself she was suicidal at times. Another person who worked with Megan in the run-up to her wedding told me, I always thought she was a classic narcissist and getting her staff to tell a magazine how amazing she is only confirms that in my mind. She is lovely when it is all going her way, but a demon when the worm turns. I thought perhaps AI would do a better voice than I would do reading over Tom's article or opinion piece or hit job or whatever you would like to call it. Now keep in mind everything that was just said. It's all anonymous. No one gives a name. Also, these are allegations that were said way back when these quote-unquote bullying allegations came forward. So if the palace who has done an investigation is not willing to publish what the investigation results are, why then are these allegations still valid? Why then are they still being published and being written as if they're facts? Why are there questions when people are willing to put their name forward and say, this is what is the truth? And I'm putting my name on it. All these other people, supposedly, allegedly, are not willing to put their names behind what they're saying. Where does that leave us? The media's eight-year-long smear campaign designed to uplift William and Kate by destroying Harry and Meghan is absolutely disgusting. This piece fails to recognize the reality that Meghan and Harry's decision to leave the UK was based on 
absolute survival. Literal survival. As the British press put Megan's life in jeopardy and vilified her at every turn, every minute, every second that they had, and not one mention of it. It's like it never existed for Tommy Boy here who wrote this article. The palace itself refused to release the results of its so-called bullion investigation, reportedly because, guess what? There was no bullion to be found. And yet, this narrative resurfaces not as a genuine examination, but as a convenient distraction from Harry's powerful speeches at the UN, speaking on the global stage. You see, the trick is, by revisiting all allegations without any fresh insight, what Sykes is doing Sykes' article is a textbook example of how British media operates. Ensuring Harry's statementship is overshadowed by some kind of scandal. Even if it means rehashing baseless accusations, the media is complicit in trying to erase the very real accomplishments of both Harry and Meghan creating a never-ending cycle of character assassination that is as insidious as it is predictable. Let us not forget, this is not journalism. And if it is journalism, it's a special kind of journalism that belongs in Britain. This is theater. This is staged for public consumption, where the villain has already been chosen. And facts, well, facts be damned. Who cares about the facts? Let's just feed them that narrative that they already have. It's a performance meant to keep the royals elevated and unblemished while casting those who dare to challenge the status quo as irredeemable. It's a system where two men, Murdoch and Hemsworth, or whatever, controls the vast majority of UK media. And since Harry is taking them to court, they are relentless in their pursuit. Perpetuating a narrative that serves their interest, not the public's. This has nothing to do with the public's interest. And in this sordid spectacle, Megan and Harry are merely the latest target. When will we hold this system to account? I'm not being naive here. This is not me trying to be cutesy. I'm being quite serious. When will the people, because it's only the people, when will the people in the United Kingdom in Britain, hold this system to account. United Kingdom is awash with enormous amount of problems. Enormous amount of problems. And if you do just a little bit of research, just scratch the surface a little bit, it traces back to these media barons and their influence over every single sector in the United Kingdom. Every single sector. It's the idiosity of politicians and other people that makes the decision that 
all of these media companies should be held in the hands of very few people. Whose great idea was that? So again, the question is, when will we hold this system to account? Or will we, like sheep, continue to indulge in this cruel theater where one couple is vilified to protect an institution that benefits from their destruction. As Sykes tries to revive a third narrative, we should question not just his motives, but the integrity of the entire media apparatus that strives on unchallenged power and unchecked cruelty. People have lost their life because of what these people have done to them. Their livelihood, their mental health, their health. And an entire country can't do anything about it. Where are the people of conviction? Where are the people of morals and values? And I'm not talking about those conservative morals and values, the one that keep people oppressed. I am speaking about what's right and what is wrong. And if you can't figure out by now that what is being done to Meghan Markle is absolutely deplorable and wrong, then you are part of that problem. You are part of the problem. When you have an entire country that is kept meek, you have an entire political class that has so many skeletons in their closet that they cannot build up a little bit of bravery, muster it up somehow, and challenge the Murdochs and challenge the, the Daily Fail and all the others that keep producing this kind of venom and poison. Or perhaps this is what you called your identity. You see, I would challenge and say it's not your identity. But you've gotten so used to this, so used to this cruelty that it's become part of the fabric. When you have people saying, oh, the tabloid press in the UK, oh, they're so, uh, oh, you have to be careful. Oh, that is intimidation. That is not freedom of the press. That is not even the third government. For, that is like an entire dictatorship, an army that has control, that wasn't elected, have control over what happens in a country. Where are the checks and balances? Where are they? And, and the beauty, the beauty of this, this piece of manure that was written is that he has the audacity to bring in Jason, whatever, right? Jason Croft, Cough, Cave, whatever. I, I, I love when I don't feel like saying a person's name. I just say whatever. <laughs> then my entire argument is going down the hill because I'm like, <laughs> I'm not being professional in this delivery right now. It's just, oh gosh, I'm feeling my frustration. Listen, so Tommy Boy here brings in Jason as one of the people that Megan bullied so badly. Does he not know that we know? Does he not like? So if anyone doesn't know who Jason is, right? Let's start out with these little factoids. <laughs> <laughs> 